Hi, this is Son of the Honda Mackinen bringing you another top five. This time it's my top five gaming controllers. And before we start, a special honorable mentions go to the Xbox One controller, as well as the PlayStation 4 controller, which I don't have. This is a PlayStation 2 controller, but I'll put a picture of that as, up there as well. Uh, the reason for it is that uh, these are that they are both really good controllers. They feel really nice in my hands and especially compared to older PlayStation controllers, I think the handles on the PlayStation 4 controller are much better. I'll put up a picture of that uh, so you can see it. And also, special honorable mention, and because people, because I know people are going to be uh, bugging me about it if I don't put it up there, the classic NES controller, of course, you know, a lot of fond memories involved uh, with this, but uh, it's not perhaps the best controller out there, but it is the controller on which pretty much every modern game controller is based on, so of course I have to mention it. But without further ado, let's get on with the first pick, and at number five, it's the classic Sega Mega Drive controller, aka the Sega Genesis controller, and I feel I need to pick, um, <coughs> point this out, because I hear so many negative things about the Sega Mega Drive controller, which I never understood. I mean, I think it's one of the coolest controllers ever, and it feels really nice in my hand. So for some people, just have seem to have a problem with the fact that its layout has three controls, I mean, the three buttons uh, in a line like this, but it doesn't really feel all that different from your NES controller in regards to how you hold it. It's nice, big, and sturdy. I really like the D-pad. The D-pad is really good. So yeah, I think it's a really, really good controller overall. Now, it does have one disadvantage, which is evident if you compare it to the contemporary, which was the Super Nintendo controller, and you can tell the problem is, of course, immediately that there aren't as many buttons on it. Which definitely makes certain types of games much harder to play, such as fighting games, but let's face it, most fighting game ports on the Mega Drive were pretty crap. And really, it works perfectly for most other games, and if you have a problem with the layout, um, almost every Sega Mega Drive game had an options menu where you could change the buttons anyway. And not to say I don't like the Super Nintendo controller, I just like the Mega Drive controller better. And it looks like other people like the controller as well, because of course Philips completely ripped it off for their CDI controller. Although you will notice that the handles are a little chunkier, but I still think this is kind of cute. And number four, it's the Nintendo GameCube controller. Now this controller splits opinions a lot, and a lot of people have a bit of an issue with it because the button layout is so unorthodox, because it's not the same like in every other freaking controller. And some people also have an issue with the fact that the buttons are kind of all different colors, which definitely does give it a slightly toyish appearance. Yes, even the black version. But what I like about the GameCube controller, besides the fact that it has those nice, sturdy handles, which makes it really nice to hold in your hands, is the fact that the GameCube controller is actually a very honest controller, okay? Because the reason this button here is the biggest is the fact that in most games, you use one button anyway. Seriously, just think about it. Most games, it's one button that you always press, usually this one. Then you may have a secondary button for secondary options and backing out of menus and things like that, which is fine, but then everything else really is just decoration. Most games don't need as many buttons as there are in a modern game controller. Another thing that I like is, the, is that the triggers snap, so it has analog trigger buttons, which I think is a really nifty function, and I wish other controllers these days would actually use for something. And one extra functionality that I really love is that on the Wii's Virtual Console, if you had downloaded Nintendo 64 games, this was really the best controller to play those games with. Because the classic controller with its SNES configuration just is not a good replacement for the Nintendo 64 controller, where the buttons were also kind of laid out differently from other game controllers. And yeah, they kind of fixed that problem on the Wii U where you could reassign buttons, but really, it's just better that the controller can be used as such. Now, some people may find it a little annoying that the C buttons are relegated to the C stick, but really, it functions pretty much the same way. Now, the one thing I dislike about the GameCube controller, and the only reason it's not in the top three, it's this thing right here. This is the worst D-pad in the history 
of D-pads. It is just way too small. And it's really frustrating because the game that I probably played the most on my Nintendo GameCube was Sonic. Yes, in the Sonic Mega Collection. And you just can't play a 2D platformer with an analog stick. You do need a proper D-pad for it. And that's the one thing that really pisses me off about the GameCube controller. Beyond which, it is still a really good controller. Now, with the top three picks on this list, it really came down to a coin toss because lots of because all of these controllers have different things about them that are really, really awesome. And just to prove the point, the number three pick is probably the best of these controllers from a user comfort and versatility point of view. And it's only the fact that I don't have as much emotional attachment to it, which is why it's number three. And that is the Xbox 360. Scratch that. This Xbox 360 controller, the wired version. Now, yes, the original controller is really nice too, but it's got that annoying bump down there uh, for the battery pack. Actually, this is a charger I bought from GameStop, as you can see from the logo. But the wired Xbox 360 controller is really good. I love this controller. It feels nice in my hands, and more so, its versatility is doubled by the fact that a vast majority of my PC games also work with this thing. So it's one of the most useful controllers I've ever bought. And also, I do have to admit that with the battery pack away from there, it feels a lot lighter and nicer in my hands. And number two, it's the Wiimote. Now, yes, it's a little bit of a hassle that you also have to have a sensor bar to go with this controller in order for it to work. But when it's been used properly, the Wiimote is a really cool controller. Plus, I just like the fact that I can point at the TV screen and pick options that way. I mean, it's completely pointless, but it's kind of fun. And okay, you do have to attach certain things to it for, in order for some games to be playable. But really, I think this is a really underappreciated controller. Plus, a lot of the games you can just play like this, and I think, again, this says a lot about modern games. Okay, it maybe says a little bit more about modern games on Nintendo systems, but the point is, it's just a really comfortable controller, it's small, it's light, and it's got really good battery life. Now, I'm serious about this, I actually hate most wireless controllers, principally from the point of view how easily they run out of batteries. The Wii U's controller was probably the worst one out of all of them. And yes, in order to maximize the battery life, you do have to turn off the microphone and the vibration, which I do anyway because those are completely pointless functions. So yeah, the Wii mode. I love it. And number one, and you already knew this before you clicked on the video, it's the Nintendo 64 controller. Now this much nicer looking one, as you can tell by the lack of a Nintendo logo on it, is of course a third party controller, which I bought not too long ago. And I will immediately admit that the number one flaw with the N64 controller, you can see it right there. It's that, it's that pathetic little joystick. But I do genuinely love this controller. People already know that the Nintendo 64 is my favorite console of all time. And this controller is just so crazy looking and wonderful. It's got a button on the bottom there. It's got a little port that you can put stuff into. You can hold it in three different ways. And what I love about this is also the fact that it really feels nice in my hands, even as an adult. Which I do have to confess is kind of one of the bigger flaws with the original NES controller. I mean, it's a good controller, don't get me wrong. But this just feels a whole lot nicer. So yeah, this is a completely personal biased pick, obviously, for the number one spot. And any number of the controllers that I talked about earlier are probably better at a lot of other stuff. But the N64 was the console with which I became a gamer, really. And so the controller is really important to me. And that's really all I have to say about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to tell me what your favorite game controller is in the comments below. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mackinen. See you on the next one.